All right, so we've gotten to our first female in the line, Tila. Arguably the most important female in the Masters brand. I mean, She-Ra, I guess you could count, but technically, legally, she's not part of the Masters brand. Well, all right, I'm not going to get into this debate with you. The point is, we are finally getting to Tila, and uh, this is basically uncharted territory, because when I started the director's commentary way back in the day and was doing them as blogs... Well, I never got to Tila. I basically got through the first Comic-Con figure, and then those original six-packs, and then a handful of other figures. And the very last figure I was able to get to in the written blogs was the uh, Webster, the Spider Guy. And I just did his blog, a few, or his blog, his new video, a few days ago. So, with that, we are now into blogless YouTube videos. So, uh, we're making it up as we go, right? All right. Well, Tila, where do we start off with Tila? And I promise uh, gratuitous artwork towards the end, just like the title promised. But for now, we're going to actually get into her history a little bit. So, well, for starters, I should definitely come clean that, well, probably like a lot of you out there, I had a huge crush on Tila when I was a little kid back in the 80s. Oh, man, when I saw her on that Filmation series, that just like... I don't know, I was like, wow, that is just one beautiful lady. And, oh, yeah, before all of you were saying, oh, you had a crush on a cartoon, come on, there, there's, there's beautiful art for centuries we've had beautiful art. Why do you think people have been sculpting and painting, you know, beautiful people for millennia? So, uh, yeah, art can be beautiful, art can be sexy. I mean, you know, this is sexy, right? I mean, winged victory, I mean, you know, if you like headless chicks and armless chicks, you know, with wings... I do, you know, hey, that's sexy too. So, uh, you know, wh why can't art also be considered attractive? And for me, well, yeah, you know, Tila was art that when I was a kid, I found very attractive. I mean, you know, this is attractive art, right? And, uh, well, okay, maybe not so much this. Let's, let's skip past this part of Tila's history, but, oh yeah, that's the history we're talking about there. Ah, oh, yeah. If only Tila could have been a real lady. I mean, one can use their imagination, right? All right, yeah, um, uh, better not have my wife watch this video. I think I'll just skip this one right now. Maybe we should just get back to focusing on Tila as an action figure and as a pop culture character. Right, Tila, 2000X Tila. They made her a little younger, uh, but going back to her history, she is the only Masters of the Universe character that is uh, named after an elephant. No, I'm serious. Tila was named after an elephant. And, uh, yeah, make all the Indiana Jones jokes you want, but Tila was originally, while well, created by Mattel, had no name, was just kind of known as the goddess or the warrior goddess. And uh, Don Gluck came along and named Tila after a character from the... Uh, the Andy Gang show, Gunga Ram's Elephant. Uh, the elephant was named Tila. And uh, that elephant was, I guess, really inspiring to Don Clute when he was a boy. And uh, he decided to give a name to the otherwise unnamed warrior goddess from the Mattel concept art that he was handed, and so dubbed the female Tila, that's actually the real elephant from the live-action show there. So, yeah, that's that's the original Tila, and we have that elephant to thank for Tila's name. All right, yeah, I know, crazy, right? Named after an elephant. So, these were the original mini-comics that Don Glut wrote, and in them he was responsible for a lot of things, like even naming the planet Eternia. Don Glute was, you know, this is him here. He really was kind of one of the fathers of Masters of the Universe. He didn't create the brand, but he contributed a lot to it. And there's, uh, you know, two things that one could say about Don Glute. He definitely loves sexy women, and Don Glute definitely loves dinosaurs. I mean, this is Don Glute's backyard. Like, this actually is his backyard. He has all of these dinosaurs. And in fact, Don Glute wrote several books about dinosaurs, including the actual dinosaur dictionary, 
where he even used my absolute favorite dinosaur art of all time, which is the mural that's hanging at the Peabody Museum in Connecticut. I actually have a copy of this hanging on the wall of my office. That's how much I love this art. So, hey, you know, maybe Don Glute is like my long-lost uncle or something. We seem to have a lot in common, at least things that we like in popular culture. And, hey, he even found ways to combine all the things he loved together with uh, those crazy B-movies that he directed. I mean, Don Glute's done a little of everything, right? Dinosaurs, sexy ladies, more dinosaurs, finding ways to have dinosaurs and sexy ladies be together. I mean, you can kind of see why he gravitated towards Tila and gave her the name from an elephant? I don't know. Well, he also wrote the novelization of Empire Strikes Back, so come on, the guy's legit. I mean, he is a sci-fi writer, and he's done some really cool stuff over the years. And we're definitely lucky that Mattel brought him in as a freelance writer to write those original mini-comics, because, like I said, he contributed quite a lot to the brand. He named the planet Eternia, uh, you know, he, he as I said, obviously he named Tila. Uh, he even, he named the castle before it was just a castle. And he came up with the name Castle Grayskull because he wanted to name it after his girlfriend of the time, Linda Gray, because he wasn't going to get any credit in the mini comics. And that was kind of his way of putting his name on, on the brand. And I'm guessing this is not the Linda Gray that Don was dating, not the actress from Dallas, but, uh, you know, that was how he was able to kind of get his name on the brand by naming it Gray Skull. And uh, he also, you know, Battle for the Clouds, one of those mini comics he, that that came from an old serial that he liked. So, yeah, he dug up a lot of old stuff he liked from elephants to old black and white serials and brought them into Motu. All right. Back to Tila. So before Tila was fleshed out in the Filmation series as the Sorceress's daughter and the heir to, you know, the Sorceress' powers and the power of Grayskull and all of that, she was just the warrior goddess. She was that, you know, non-named character, and she was actually designed to represent two characters at the same time. Um, neither of them Tila. So basically... One was more of a magic character, and one was more of a warrior character, and the idea was you could take the mask off, the, the, the snake mask, and that was how you transformed her between characters. It was really Mattel's way of selling two females in the line early on and only having to sculpt and actually market and sell one character. So the, the snake armor mask that she wears was meant to be a completely separate character from her taking off the mask. So it wasn't a secret identity thing. It was actually meant to be one toy representing two completely different characters. And then all of the accessories you were going to need for both characters were included with one figure. And the, the, the helmet or the mask, the snake mask, was purposely designed to kind of cover essentially most of the upper torso so that when you were putting the snake armor on you would feel like you had a completely different character one being more of a warrior character which was the look without the mask the one you're seeing here and the one that eventually became known as Tila whose accessory was the shield and then the other one when you put the snake hill uh, the snake head armor on and again covered up not just the head but a good portion of the torso like this, and got the staff, this was meant to represent the goddess, or eventually what became the sorceress, uh, after filmation and, you know, more stories were written. But originally the character was just called the goddess, and in fact she appeared in the mini-comics with the snake armor, but also with green skin. And for decades she was just kind of known as the goddess or the green goddess, but the idea was both figures were represented by the same toy. So you got, you know, you knocked out both of your female characters with one purchase. And again, the, the goddess character eventually evolved into the sorceress and went from a snake motif to a bird motif. But the idea of a magical guardian character was always there from the beginning and really just changed animal motifs. It's interesting to see how, for example, Super 7 did a repaint of Tila in the snake armor and, and still called the character Tila. Which, I don't know, in my mind, that's not correct, because 
this is supposed to represent a complete like you could Mattel in other words could have sold both characters they could have sold a goddess character and a Tila character from the original eight back but instead to be economical and because they knew female figures don't sell as well in boys lines they chose to sell both the goddess if you will and Tila in one package just with different armor and yes eventually the goddess you know had the green skin in the mini comic and uh you know so i guess you know that made it a little bit i don't know the whole thing's confusing but you got my point is that it was, it was a two in one because girls don't sell as well in boys lines just go watch my my video on on that and uh but for classics we got a twofer because it was an easy repaint which was awesome and we actually tooled the goddess's staff at the same time as tila not so much with Eva Lynn. I mean, we got another repaint with her, which was great. So I guess this would be a threefer, but for as you know, as far as the body, because we had to fully tool that brand new body. Which here it is. We we showed off the figure at New York Comic Con, and I think it was one of the only figures we showed off before the paint was done. And it was very early on because well, we were excited to have a female body to show off because it was you know the most different from all the other figures we'd done. And I do remember fans were complaining about her butt. Speaking of this image here, they, they were thinking her butt was not big enough, if I recall. And the horseman actually re-sculpted a little bit to uh, better appease the fans. And then here she is fully painted. And, I mean, Tila was really an amazing figure. We did have some problem with the plastic that her dress was made of that was a little too thick, which limited her movement more than was anticipated. She was supposed to rotate at the waist, but because the plastic that her dress was made up of, or her tunic, the waist was really hard to move. And it was one reason I really wanted to push to get a new Tila, which took years to, to do like an, an actual version of that Tila. But she was loaded up from day one. I mean, she had staff, she had the Zor bird, she had an alternate head in order to do the, the goddess uh, snake armor. And as I said, we also tooled the goddess staff when we tooled her, kind of like we did with Zodak, so that we'd be set up for success, if you will, and when we wanted to do the Green Goddess character, or just the Goddess, we wouldn't have to tool anything, because the staff was already done. So, again, really smart, glad we did that, um, as well as with Zodak, Zodak. The, the bird was also something we got a lot of use out of. Uh, the Zor bird that was originally tooled with Tila got released over and over again, not with just with Motu, but got released in DCU, uh, as Beast Boy's green form, and, and all sorts of things. And as I mentioned, you know, we did eventually get to another version of Tila, although this one wound up not being as popular as I thought it would be. I, I actually thought this was going to be an incredibly popular version of Tila, especially for how much it was demanded, but people wanted classic Tila, and it's understandable. I mean, this is the Tila they grew up with, and this is the one that was in the show, and, uh, we finally got to, we got to her and